All right, everyone. With all, uh, thanks so much for being here tonight. Um, as always, we really appreciate you taking time out of your Tuesday to enjoy episode 13 of season two of Line Change with Mayhem head coach Ryan Michael. Sorry for the late start here. We've had some issues with traffic and weather and whatnot. Um, I actually just got back down from Atlanta and was sitting in it the whole way back. So uh, forgive me if I'm a little bit slow <laughs> tonight. But um, as always, um, we're really glad that you're here. And what we want to go ahead and do is um, really just break down the previous weekend real quick. Uh, and then I'm going to introduce our guests tonight, both of them goaltenders who had an outstanding weekend, uh, not only here on Friday night, but also on the road in Roanoke and Fayetteville. Uh, Hayden Stewart and Michael Stiliatis, if you would please give a round of applause to these two gentlemen for being here. I'm going to get to you guys in just a second. Um, Coach, first thing I want to ask you is, um, because last week I had asked you what it would feel like basically to you um, as a successful weekend for you. It was a very challenging part of the schedule, three games in three days in three cities. Um, and you told me that a successful weekend, by your definition, would be a combination of points um, in the standings and a gut feeling of how the team played. So my question to you is, on the ride home from Fayetteville on Sunday, what was your gut feeling? How did you feel uh, in terms of the team's level of success getting uh, three points out of six in a fairly challenging part of the schedule there? Um, I think it was a mixture of both. You know, mm -hmm. um, Against Huntsville, my concern going into the game was, you know, hey, we, we spotted this team two goals, pretty much just not playing at all and, and fought back. And un unfortunately, you know, we, we kind of did the exact same thing to start to yeah. start the game. Um, you know, I'm certainly always happy for the most part with this group in terms of, like, resiliency and um, understanding, you know, we got to turn it on and, and get it going. And, you know, fighting back for a point, you know, that night, um, you know, I thought, game in, in Roanoke was a bit of a, a slugfest. We knew it was going to be a war just because, you know, that's that's a game where, you know, it's two points for one of the teams, but it's a four-point swing. Right. Um, you know, that's a huge game because both of us are fighting for that last playoff spot and, and getting in. You know, mm -hmm. I thought Stilly played great, kept us in it because we started slow again um, until we can kind of get our feet going and Again, like I said, it was just a war back and forth and, you know, being able to find a way to get a, a greasy two points on the road and, you know, not going to overtime or giving them a point. Um, you know, I wish, you know, maybe in the third we'd stay out of the box a little bit more and not giving them so much momentum, but, you know, finding a way, uh, you know, on the road is certainly a good thing. And then, you know, Sunday, um, you know, it's tough to to get right on the bus after the game Saturday. We got to the to the yeah. hotel at about 3 in the morning, so you're playing a game in, in less than 12 hours. Um, you know, sluggish start again Sunday. Um, you know, Stewie played great, kept us in it for most of that night, and it was a weird game just in the sense that, you know, with whatever, a few minutes left, and we had that power play, and we had a bunch of great A chances uh, playing six on four, so that's a game where, you know, that could have been out of hand early. Stewie kept us in it, and, you know, maybe, you know, the way we played in the third, um, we find a way to get one or two, and we make that game, you know, a lot more closer than it, it, it could have been. So um, I thought overall it was a pretty good weekend. You know, mm -hmm. three out of six points is, is, is good. Um, you know, it's just it's the same thing, the inconsistency. And, you know, we have to play 60 minutes and get closer to doing that because the lulls are just kind of what's killing us. And, I, and it's hard on the road and, um, you know, playing in three different cities in three nights. But that's, yeah. you know, when I was telling some of the guys, it's you got to be a pro. You have to be ready to go. You have to be able to get off the bus, have a cup of coffee, and, and flip the switch and, and have a good pregame skate and set yourself up to have success that night. So. Yeah, and you mentioned earlier on the last show that the back part of the schedule is often uh, loaded with these three games and three nights. Um, so the team's going to have really no choice but to uh, just get accustomed to it going forward. Um, and, Coach, I wanted to ask you one more question before I get on to the players here. Um, because it's sort of a, it's a rarity here that we've got two goalies on stage at the same time. Goaltenders, they tend to have a reputation um, as being more superstitious, I guess you could say. Um, I guess a, a little bit more odd. <laughs> um, so my question to you is this, um, because our fans don't know either of them too well. Neither of them have been here for too long. Um, on a scale from 1 to 10, how would you rate their oddness as people in the locker room <laughs> as, as what 10 being like really odd or 
Yes. Okay. I mean, they're both pretty, I'd say, low. I mean, they don't mm-hmm. talk much, and um, they kind of keep themselves and, and do their own thing. But, you know, I've certainly, from my playing time, you know, I've been around some, some real uh, – some real oddballs, definitely 10 or 11 on the scale. So, um, you know, but for these two, um, you know, I, d- I definitely say, you know, definitely lower for sure. They're, they're quiet. They kind of just come to the rink, do their thing. They're right. definitely professionals. And, you know, if they if they do have some oddness to them, they're doing a very good job of cloaking it because I haven't seen it. Okay. Well, maybe a Dominic Hasek will come out of one of you two at some point this season. <laughs> All right, uh, Hayden, the next question I have is for you. Um, so you were the goaltender who um, you know, backstopped the Knoxville Ice Bears last season um, that ended up knocking the mayhem out of the postseason last year. Um, and you, were, you played a game in Knoxville against Make and then one here. Um, so my question to you is, you know, when you were uh, in those two postseason games back in April, um, did anything while playing against the Mayhem sort of struck a chord with you that made you thought, hey, this might be a place I might like to play at one day? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, playing, I'm, I'm trying to remember back into April, those games, um, <clears throat> I think overall I felt like, you know, those those two games both came down to the wire. I think it was like a 2-1 maybe and then a, a 3-2 game. That sounds right. Uh, yeah, like three two uh, on Saturday. Yeah, we won two to one on Friday at home, yep. and then yeah. So, uh, I mean, playing in that series, that was a really fun series to play in. Uh, I thought that, you know, Macon was tough not only because of the level of talent that they had, but I thought that the way that they competed both of those nights all the time. Uh, I remember on Saturday night they came out hot and scored early and got up early, so they were they were ready to go. And I was thinking that. Uh, you know, this series is probably going to be a three-game series with with just how it's going. And, uh, you know, we managed to score late, but I, I really like the the compete level and just that kind of brand of hockey that they played. And so if I could take something from that series, I think that would be it about as far as being excited uh, to play here. Now, speaking of compete level, a lot of people don't know this about you, but you actually went to the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets camp over the summer uh, this past year. Um, how did that opportunity sort of come about for you, and what were some of the things that you were able to take away from it? Uh, so that happened for me because the coach that I skate with over the summer is actually the goalie coach for the Blue Jackets. Um, he's who I train with, and they had a hole in their, in their training camp. So he asked me if I wanted to go and do it, and I said, sure. Uh, so that's kind of how it came about. Of um, I mean, picking, picking up uh, things. I mean, there was a lot of there. There were some practices, but a lot of that was scrimmages when I was there. And kind mm-hmm. of picking up on the game at that level. I think everything is just done with a purpose, and it's rarely there's like rarely a, a breakdown, and there's rarely guys make a mistake with the puck or make a bad play with the puck. I think everybody is always just in the right position in every every situation. And that's probably kind of the biggest thing. Yeah, I've heard actually from some people that it's actually easier um, to play at that level just because uh, of, you know, everybody being in the right spot at the right time and the flow is a little bit better. Um, But, Michael, the next question I have is for you. Um, On Saturday, you uh, had a very strong performance in goal. You backstopped Mayhem to a 4-3 win in Roanoke against your former team. Um, You know, you played five games there at the start of the season. It was your first game playing for the mayhem you dressed on friday but didn't play was saturday a game where you specifically asked coach michael to be uh, in the lineup knowing you were going up against your old guy uh, your old guys there um it was uh it was definitely one that i wanted to play um i mean i'm sure i'm sure uh coach knew that uh i wanted to be in there and i was glad that he gave me that chance mm-hmm Definitely. Well, you uh, certainly earned the right to uh, get another, get some more playing time under your belt for sure. Um, and this is your first time playing in the South. You've played you've played overseas um, in Sweden. Uh, you played a lot back home in Canada growing up. Uh, what have been some of your first impressions of uh, hockey down here? Uh, it's been um, overseas. Uh, the rink the rinks are Olympic sized ice. Um, I feel like the style of play is a lot different. Uh, it's more more east to west, um, high speed, high mm. skill, um, and then coming to this league, there's a lot of. Uh, it's a, definitely a lot more tougher um, in terms of uh, f- 
fighting even, fighting, all the the hitting. Um, the speed of the game is uh, it's it's pretty similar, I would say. Uh, so I find it's I find at this level it's it's a little bit harder to um, see what's going on. There's a uh, bigger bodies mm-hmm. uh, in front of the net, um, so I find that that's probably the main adjustment. But um, in terms of that, it's uh, it's been a, it's been a good transition. Yeah, I, I want to say there's been at least some type of scrap, a big scrap in every game since you've been here so far. And actually, when I was just in Atlanta, uh, one of their sales reps told me about one of their goaltenders who's out for the rest of the season because he messed up his catching hand because he got into a goalie fight. Um, so hopefully that doesn't happen to either of you two guys. Uh, the last question I have for you guys before I turn things over to the audience is uh, we've got Valentine's Day coming up. I know that you guys will be in Pensacola. You'll be playing. Any early Valentine's Day plans or post-game Valentine's plans for any of you guys? That looks like a hard no. Uh, do you want me to go? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> Kenzie can go for you yeah, if she wants. Kenzie's, Kenzie's going to be joining me in, in Pensacola on the trip. Oh, cool. Um, just because we're it's Valentine's Day as well as our five year anniversary is coming up, so um, we're going to be doing that. So, um, yeah. Congratulations to both of you. Mm-hmm. For me, uh, I'll probably just be sending some flowers and chocolate. Uh, to my girlfriend who isn't uh, in town, so okay, that's about it for me. Love it, Hayden. Uh, nothing for me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like he's a bachelor. <laughs> I think I think the I think the best plan is a couple of wins this weekend. That's what I got. There you go. Yeah. Love it. Uh, well said. All right, guys. That's all the questions I have. Uh, the floor is now yours. Uh, DJ, appreciate it. The only thing that I ask is that you please ask your questions into this crowd mic here, just so we can get the uh, whole show archived for later on. All right. Uh, my question is for Coach Mike's. Uh, On Saturday, it looked pretty clear that the goal by Beer was kicked in. Uh, It even had your defenseman and goaltender on the ice, like, right away pointing that it was uh, a kick in. But it didn't get overturned. Um, Do you remember anything about the explanation of just they didn't see the kick in? Because at first, when I watched it live, I missed it as well until I saw lots of replays later. But when you're refing, you don't have that advantage in this league. Uh, Do you remember any of the explanation as to what was going on or anything like that? Uh, I mean, to be honest, they just didn't see the kick i mean it's it's the three-man system it's just you know it's just the nature of it unfortunately you get those plays where um because of the way that play developed you know it was it was our possession in their zone with a turnover that you know it it went from their our offensive blue line in our net within you know five six seconds so by the time you know the ref gets down there it's kind of hard to see and you know they have a jumbotron there, and they're playing the replay, and it's it's tough because you know because of the league rules, the refs can't you know use that to determine. They just are, are going based off what they saw live. So um, you know, watching the replay, it does you know it's questionable. Um, is it super distinct kicking? Maybe not, but I I thought it was, um, and um, you know it's just again the unfortunate part of kind of the league rules and the setup and. I mean, we've gotten calls, you know, benefiting us that way at times this year. So it's just, it's one of those things that, you know, it's just a bad bounce in our favor, or not in our favor, and just kind of had to move on. Hey, Coach. Um, how do you feel the guys have been responding to the challenge of putting on a legitimate uh, run to the postseason? Um, you know, pretty good for the most part. It's I, I got to, I want to figure out kind of like, a, you know, what's, what's the magic number for us, you know, um, in terms of whether that's points or wins, you know, what, what gets us to that eighth or seventh spot and gets us in the playoffs. So, um, you know, a weekend like the weekend we just had where, you know, we get three of six and, you know, maybe we could have and should have had four or five of six. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's nice. It's positive. So, um, it's just how do we continue to keep stringing weekends like that together, and it's and it's going to be tough just because you know we only have five home games left, or six. six home games left. Um, you know, so the majority of, of those points and in, in the hard work is going to have to be in, in hostile environments and, and on the road. So it's just embracing kind of that grind. Uh, 
this will be for both goalies. I know during practice and stuff, you're kind of sort of competing with each other to get that playing time. But when the other goalie's in the game, whichever one's on the bench, do you find yourself watching them play, rooting for them, giving pointers when they come off the ice, or even after the game? Yeah, I think uh, um, every time there's a media timeout, uh, we always we always talk about the game. We always come, we're always rooting each other on, uh, you know, giving each other high fives. So it's definitely uh, it needs to be a support for uh, for both for both guys in order for things to work. Yeah, I agree. That same thing. Media timeouts. Uh, anytime one of us comes to the bench, we're always uh, always talking, supporting each other. I mean. Uh, when you're on the bench watching the game, you, you can pick up on a, on a lot of other stuff that you can't when you're in the net. So um, things that they're doing, tendencies that they may have or, you know, things the other team may like to do on for a check or in the offensive zone, if we see that, we'll tell each other and, uh, you know, kind of just uh, tell each other to keep going. Silly question, but which is harder to defend? Those slap shots or those little fukes that just kind of go and fizzle and right behind you and boom, they scored. Which do you hate <laughs> more? Honestly, I hate the ones that are they're supposed to be a hard shot, but it ends up being a change up because it's not what you're expecting. Uh, personally, that's what I find is actually harder to, to and it looks it looks softer, but it's I feel like that's harder in some cert, uh, circumstances. Yeah, I would, say, I would say I agree. The really tough ones are when uh, you pick up a good read on a guy's stick blade and you know that he's trying to go in a certain spot and then for some reason it comes off his stick weird and it goes somewhere else, and those are tough. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Those are, frust- those are very frustrating. Uh, these are questions for both goalies. Uh, you both made it to this level but took very different paths here. Hayden went through the collegiate system, whereas, Michael, you took more of the junior role. Um, did you ever think about how uh, taking the other path would have maybe changed some things for you, and what do you feel like you gained from taking the path that you did? Well, um, for me, you know, I – yeah, there's times I, I do think that I – I wish I went to the college, um, took the college route, but uh, I definitely think that going overseas helped me a lot uh, in terms of just experience playing with older, faster, stronger guys. Um, uh, just what I can take from that was uh, probably just probably just the experience of playing. I got I got a lot of games played over there, um, and I think that's the biggest thing. I don't think it. You know, whether whatever level you're playing at, I think you need to be playing games in order to um, grow as a goaltender. And for me, I was uh, I was fortunate enough to get a lot of games over there. So I think that's what I can take um, on my path here. Uh, for me, growing up, I always wanted to play college hockey. I knew that's I think always in my mind the route that I wanted to go. That's what I always grew up watching. Uh, you know, every Friday night, the night before, as a youth player, you play on Saturday and Sunday. So um, I always grew up watching that. I grew up watching Wisconsin Badgers. I think uh, if, I could, if I could have gone the junior route, I think the advantage of doing that is you play a lot more games, so it's more of a pro schedule. And you kind of get that uh, just getting used to playing that many games all the time. Um, the college route, I... I, I like too, though, because you have a lot more time to, you you spend a lot more time in the weight room. Um, practices are a little bit longer, so you play more of a structured system, a structured game, and that's that's nice. And then, yeah, developing yourself physically off the ice uh, and having a lot of time to do that and a lot of time to work on your skills away from game action, uh, that's a really nice thing too. Uh, sort of going off that, uh, Hayden, what were some of your biggest takeaways and memories from your time at Cornell, and how, how have you been able to apply that to your pro career now? Uh, so I think at Cornell, uh, one, of the, one of the things, whether you're in the weight room or in practice, it's just 
you're going all the time. And even if you're tired, you know, the physical tests and everything that we do there off the ice is just to really just to build mentally that no matter what, you're given 100%, you're going, you know, like you're, you're practicing hard every single day because if you don't, coach will call you in and he'll look at, they record practice, they video it. So they have video of practice and if guys aren't working hard, they come in and show them and they'll be like, this is why you're not playing this weekend. So um, every day it's, you're, you're held to a high level and you work hard every day and uh, you push yourself farther than you think you can until you're done, you know, no matter what. And I think that's kind of the biggest, that, uh, that mentality that they kind of ingrained in me there and they ingrained in everybody there, I think is something that I, is, is a big thing I took with me. Was there any particular Ivy League school you guys hated more than the rest? Uh, well, our biggest rivalry was Harvard. So they were always a good team, and uh, when they would come into our building, uh, the, f- the students would always throw fish on the ice. So that's kind of an old tradition there. There's a, just a ton of fish, and it smells for, like, the first half of the game, but uh, it's college hockey, and that's kind of the culture of it. This one's for the coach. You went into Roanoke and you had to play against some players that just recently left Macon. How do you make adjustments? Because you know they know your style of play and they also know the other players' techniques or, or mannerisms. Do you consciously make those adjustments? Um, to be honest, it's not particularly. Everybody's kind of aware of the style of play that everybody's playing. You know, we all have access to everybody's film after every game, so um, you're kind of always watching. Everybody sees everybody's forecheck for the most part. So, um, you know, neutral zone coverages, D zone, everything like that is, is is out there free for every coach to watch everybody else. So, you know, it doesn't really change. The only thing you kind of rely on maybe, you know, talking to, to Oscar before Fayetteville and, um, you know, Colton before Roanoke is just maybe some of, like, the the plays off face-offs or something that, you know, they bring out, you know, every third or fourth game that maybe you don't pick up on film. So, um, you know, for the most part, it doesn't really change a whole lot. Um, just because, again, for the most part, everybody's similar in what they're going to do night, night in and night out. All right, my question is for uh, both goalies again. Um, in the NHL this year, we've seen uh, two uh, spectacle-like moments from goalies that are really different. Uh, Pekka Rene scored a goal, and then Mike Smith fought Cam Talbot. If you could choose uh, to win a fight or score a goal in your career, which one would you choose and why? That's a good one. Um, well, I don't know if, uh, if many of you know this. I've actually scored a goal in my career, in my junior career. Um, so I've, I've done that. So I guess I'd win a fight. Check that one off the list then. <laughs> Uh, I think for me, it'd be scoring a goal just because it's really rare. I guess I'll keep going then. Uh, so goaltending masks are kind of a unique part of sports as they're the only really like personalized piece of equipment that you really see in sports. Uh, and I know at this level there isn't really a lot of opportunity to get, you know, a customized mask. But if you could, uh, what would you put on it and kind of what would you think want it to look like? That's a good question. Uh, I would need a lot of time to think about that. Um, I don't think I've had my mask painted since I was um, in minor hockey. Um, but I would probably just go with, like, a team, a team theme, just team colors, try to keep it not too... Uh, flashy, but yeah, put a yeah, keep it that way. Keep it simple, I guess. Yeah, pr- probably probably be similar to for me, I guess. Just uh, red and blue colors, you know. Maybe a, a Viking-looking guy on there, like Mac, or I don't know, like Thor with his hammer or something. Hard to say. <laughs> What 
rituals do you have as a goaltender? And what happens if for some reason you can't quite get those worked in? <laughs> Does it mess you up? I mean, like I, I've noticed how, you know, hitting the, the um, goal and different things. So um, that's one question. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, I think a lot of guys, a lot of goalies, like what um, the first question, what the first thing we talked about was how the goalies are very superstitious. Uh, I I try to keep it as minimal as possible. There's al there's always like uh, you know I wouldn't really call them uh, I would call them more like routines or just like things you do to prepare for a game. Just tr try to keep everything the same. Don't change too much. Um, and then obviously in terms of like a warm up. If your body's feeling a certain way, maybe you do something a little bit differently that time. Uh, just try to keep yourself loose for the game. But uh, no, I. I yeah, I, I would say that. I would say so. Yeah, it's something that you have to do. Because um, again, you don't want to you don't want to change too much. But uh, for myself, I, I I try not to. You know, get into my own head about that doing superstitious stuff like that, just because then, it, like what you said, if you don't do it, then maybe you get into your own head. But I'm sorry. Most of the most of the time, it's just whatever you do before the game. It's just uh, it comes natural. It's like you don't even think about it anymore. You just do do whatever you feel like you have to do. So I would say it's uh, pretty simple like that. But good question though. Uh, yeah, I was going to say similar things. I mean, we we play so many games that at this point our our routines are kind of down to a science and you have a certain amount of time. And uh, I would say, yeah, I don't like to have superstitions. I just have routines. And then if I need to add something because I feel a certain way before the game or I need to take something out because I feel like I don't need it, then uh, I have it. And then, yeah, there's some, there's some games where travel, juniors here, whatever, where you show up late and you're not able to do your full routine, but you just kind of... Sometimes it's nice to just go out and play, too, and you don't think about it too much. So when the puck is on the other end of the ice, what thoughts are going through your mind? Like, what am I going to have for supper? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, hanging out, taking a break. What's going through your mind? Yeah, like maybe what are you going to do after the game? What What are we doing tomorrow? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, we're just, just trying to stay into the moment. Uh, Actually, I just find myself watching the play and, uh, you know, just waiting, waiting for the next uh, opportunity where I need to be ready to go. So I... Do you ever think, like, oh, no, here you come. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you're thinking like that, then it, it might not be going for you, uh, well for you. So in a way, I almost want them to just come down just co so it's like, you know, you keep yourself into the game. That's why I think... Uh, if you ask most goalies, I think they'll say that when you're getting a lot of shots, it's almost easier to play and like stay into a groove because you stay into the game. Yeah, I'd say uh, similar for me. Basically, usually you're just you're staying alert, but you're kind of relaxed and just watching the play at the other end. Uh, I mean, a lot of times something will happen, and I'll think, "Oh man, we almost scored there," or something like that. Or that was a close one, but yeah. When you see, you kind of see the play develop from the other end of the ice, and uh, when the puck changes possessions, you're not really thinking, you know. You're just kind of so focused on what the situation is coming at you, what they have, how many guys they have, how many guys we have, what scenario you're about to face, and so you don't really have time for thoughts of, you know, here they come. It's just, you're just kind of reacting and, and playing on instinct. Uh, my question is for Mike's. Uh, so I haven't finished watching all the games yet from this weekend, but from what I've gathered from what I've seen in the box scores, it seems like a very unevenly officiated kind of weekend. Friday, there were only two power plays in the whole game. They both went to uh, you guys. Saturday seemed like a more kind of normal, normally called game, and then Sunday went back more towards Friday's kind of prison rule style. Uh, do you feel like that had any impact on how, you know, the the three and three and how your team played, or was that just kind of a weird thing and done nothing to pay any mind to? Well, I think it depends a little bit just kind of, you know, who's officiating the game. I think uh, Friday, 
I hadn't recognized the guys we had, and they were actually from, they do a lot of Peoria games, so they're from Illinois, so, um, and if you're familiar with kind of the way the games go when we play in Peoria, it's a little bit more to the, the prison rules side of the, uh, of the scale, so I think, you know, maybe that's why you saw that Friday, um, and then we got, you know, different officials kind of throughout the weekend, so it kind of depends, you know, when you get accustomed to the same four or five guys, you kind of have an idea of, you know, maybe based on past history, whether they like you or not, and, um, you know, kind of what you're about to face in terms of, you know, how many, how many things are going to get called or, you know, what little ticky tack stuff gets called or let go or, or whatnot. So, I mean, I don't think it really, you know, affects us. I think for the most part, even, even the guys kind of know, you know, when we when we go on the ice for warm ups and whoever skates out with the stripes on, you kinda have an idea of, you know, what you're about to kinda get out of them. So I gotta ask this one for Dalton. As a member of the crew in the corner that yells at goalies since we got both goalies here tonight. We're more creative here in Macon. We don't just yell, you suck. A lot of things that come out of our mouth is stupid, doesn't make any sense. But as goalies, they all say we don't pay attention, but you have to hear us. And we know they hear us because of their reactions. So what are some of the craziest things you may have heard yelled at you? Uh, that's a good question, Don. I like this one. Uh, well, you definitely, you definitely can hear the people yelling at you when they're that close and they're that loud. Uh, but, yeah, you just kind of tone it out, and usually I just kind of smile and just let it roll off my shoulders. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of, one of my favorite things I heard, I heard here in the playoffs last year, <laughs> and that was, Stuart, you better get your golf clubs ready. <laughs> and, uh, I, I laughed at that one, and I enjoyed it. So you guys can know that. I imagine there were some uh, kids in the Harvard student section who had done some research and studied you up pretty good. Uh, in college hockey, yeah, they do do research, and it's <laughs> it's funny. Um, I think f- for myself, I honestly don't even really notice uh, too much of the, the yelling. I, I, the only time I really notice it is uh, I notice when the when there's a fight, the crowd gets real loud, and there's just too much screaming going on. But other than that, uh, maybe I'm just so like in the zone, I just block everything out. But I I, I don't even really notice. Uh, too much unless there's one guy in the crowd um, that's really loud, which I don't think I've experienced yet. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think <laughs> I would hope you guys are, are get, uh, would be nice enough to me then. <laughs> All right, so uh, in recent years, a lot of complaints have been made about the ever-growing size of goalie equipment. Uh, being that you're both goalies, do you think that smaller pads would be safe, and do you think it's uh, good for the game that more pucks are going in? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> if goalies had it their way, every game would be one nothing. Exactly, that's right. Um, no, I, I think they already shrunk the, the equipment once, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I mean... I guess whatever, if, if, that's, if, if it's more entertaining for the fans, I think that's what, in the NHL, I think that's what they're trying to do. Um, but I think to a certain point, uh, I think you've got to keep, uh, keep the safety of the, of the players in mind as well. So um, I think it's okay the way it is right now, actually. Uh, yeah, so I got a couple things on this. I guess When they shrunk the equipment the first time or the first two times or whatever, it kind of backfired on the NHL because all of a sudden goalies got a lot faster and they just kind of adapted their game and then they were playing, you know, the best goalie that's ever been played uh, in the history of the game. So that's one thing. Um, Another thing is I think the rules, yeah, and I mean, I think like you got to keep the goalies protected. Where I, where I would take issue with it is when Bishop took, like, in the playoffs last year, took a puck off, like, his collarbone because the chest pads are smaller now, and then he's hurt, and then they put it in the op- open net where, like, you got to let him do his job. The players shoot the puck so hard now, and it's coming so fast that it is important that you uh, do keep them protected.
Uh, so last one from me here. Um, I know that when, uh, for being a goalie, and I wasn't a goalie, so like I'm learning more as I get older and learn more about hockey, but I've, one of the things I've learned is that uh, changing teams and kind of uh, is much more difficult for goalies because it's not just a new system in front of you, it's new players and kind of trying to understand where pucks are going to come from, where scoring chances are going to come from. Uh, what do you think, uh, especially the both of you have played for a bunch of teams over your career and had to make those transitions, uh, what about those transitions makes it hard and what uh, about it makes it easier? Uh, so I think uh, for me, the hardest thing, honestly, is just getting chemistry with your defenseman on uh, when you go back to play the puck and kind of knowing, you know, the calls and where those guys like to be and what each team like to, likes to do. Every team does it a little bit differently. Um, I think as far as things that are good, it's uh, it's been, it's you know, sometimes nice to get a little refresh and a, and a change of, of scenery sometimes. That kind of can help you mentally. And then I think, like, this year for me, I, I like the way that we play with our structure way more than I did on, on Knoxville. And I feel like it's uh, the game that we play is is better here. So it's it's been better for me to be here. Yeah, I agree with the first statement. I think the toughest part is just, you know, having new defense in front of you that communicating uh, with them. Uh, definitely need to, to talk with them for sure. Um, going back to play the puck is probably the probably the biggest thing. Um, other than that, I think it's the structure. There's going to be breakdowns in a game, no matter what. I think, but uh, I think it's just. Uh, I think it's. I think it's just. Worry about yourself and just worry about your own job. All right, you guys. Any other questions? Okay, well, thanks, as always, for your participation. We really appreciate it. Um, as always, I'm just going to ask Coach one last thing before we proceed with our trivia question. Um, I didn't have time after we got back from Atlanta to stop in the office, so I don't have the puck with me. But whoever does answer the trivia question correctly will win an autographed puck from Hayden Stewart and Michael Stiliatis. Um Before we get to that, though, Coach, um, you guys, like we uh, had discussed earlier, came off a really difficult weekend, a um, bunch of different, three different cities, three different opponents, um, three nights. Is it going to be sort of easier going down to, you know, nice, sunny Pensacola for a couple of games, staying in a hotel, not having to sleep on the bus, <laughs> hopefully, um, and just, you know, playing the same team back-to-back -back nights as difficult of an opponent as they are in their own building? Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of the weather, it's definitely going to be nicer than going to Peoria. So um, yeah. I'm excited for that. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know, being able to, again, we don't have ice here this week, so... Um, you know, the opportunity to kind of get down there a day early and almost like establish roots for the weekend, I think it'll help. Just, you know, you're sleeping in a bed and um, gets you a chance to, like, walk around. And, you know, being outside in the sun will help mentally for sure. And, um, you know, being able to get an actual meal and, um, you know, not being stuck on the bus is going to be nice. So, um, you know, I'm excited for it. Um, it's a good team. It's a tough place to play. We've had, you know, yeah. some limited success down there in terms of, you know, playing them tight and playing them well, getting overtime, getting points. So, um, you know, it's another opportunity for us to, you know, make up some ground. And, you know, I know they're hungry. They had a not the greatest weekend last weekend by their standards. So, um, you know, we got to, you know, prepare as best we can with the limited ice that we have. Um, and just, you know, go down there in, in the right mindset. And, you know, hopefully the sun will kind of lift our spirits a little bit down there so um, and find a way to get, get some points again. Yeah, well, just don't, do, don't uh, enjoy it too much. Don't get sunburned. It's a lot harder to play with a sunburn. But um, to all three of you guys, uh, best of luck down there. Um, we'll, as always, I'll be cheering you on from Macon. Sir, did you have a question? Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, since goalies are often isolated when they're – know in action I'm mean, sure it feels like that what would you do if you weren't a goalie would you play another position in hockey or would you do something completely different with your life that's a hard question uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know I feel like I would play defenseman or something yeah I think I think so because I've always loved hockey, and that's and I, before I played goalie, I played everything else. So, 
I feel like I would do something like that maybe. Yeah, I, I'd probably I'd probably play forward. Uh, yeah, hmm. surprisingly, but if if it wasn't that, maybe maybe another sport. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike's didn't like that answer. Uh, no, it's no, fine. fine. <laughs> yeah, if I had to, you know. But uh, yeah. Well, you probably know all the goaltenders' weaknesses, right? Knowing exactly, we'll just shoot knuckle pucks. Exactly, at the I would net, know. Like you said I would, earlier, I would know how to score. So. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, again, thanks for uh, asking your questions. Um, the last question that I have is always a trivia question, um, and it is this: Hayden Stewart grew up in a, a town in northern Illinois, um, at where there was an AHL team located there. What is the name of that AHL team? Yes. No. <laughs> Good guess. They were an AHL team. Does anyone know this one? I told him the league. Oh, you did? Yeah, I didn't tell him the city. Should I tell him the city? Yeah. Any Sean? Do you know? Shane? Yeah. As of right now, you're in the lead. <laughs> DJ, you were close with that guess. No. Rockford is the city. Anyone know the name of? There you go. Congratulations, DJ. You've won a pie. <laughs> Shane, you were close, man. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, again, thanks so much for coming out. I know it was uh, not the best of days. It's pretty rainy out there. The, the, the traffic's bad and everything. So we appreciate you being here and hope you've enjoyed your meals. And we'll see you guys next week. Thank you, guys.